Welcome all, my name is Urban and I will be your instructor throughout this course. I'm also its creator. So, in this introductory video, I usually like to go over a few things in regard to the course, like who is it meant for, what sort of, uh, what are the prerequisites for it, what sort of level of knowledge is expected from you, what other benefits do you have, why should you learn C++, etc. So, first things first is why should you learn C++? Why is that important at all? First of all, C++ is a low programming language. It has a very messed up syntax in a sense that it is not user friendly, so to say. But it is very powerful. It, it is able to do things a lot faster than it is a, you are able to do things a lot faster with C++ than you are able to do with other programming languages. It is very low level, it is down to the core, it has direct hardware access. For example, if you compare it to Java or, uh, I don't know, maybe to Python or C Sharp or something like that, all those languages are considerably slower than C++, although they are a lot easier to learn, I would say anyway. However, C++ does give you an enormous amount of freedom and therefore can make a lot of mistakes while coding, but that's the beauty of it, that you can, that you do have the ability to do pretty much whatever it is that you want to do, even though it perhaps sometimes makes no sense. Anyway, games today for PCs, they are made in C++. So most of the major games out there are made in C++. Th this is done because they're fast, they're optimized, and they can work. Some of the games which are written in Java or something or some or some similar programming language for the PCs, they will be considerably slower than the runs written in C++. Also, operating systems are written in these low-level programming languages as well. In addition to that, you have a number of desktop applications, and on top of all of that, I personally find C++ very very interesting and very useful, especially since I'm the pen testing world. The fact that you can do anything that you want with it, that there are no, that there are pretty much no limitations, enables us to write pretty much all sorts of code that we would need. For example, in the other course where I have created instructions on how to create a keylogger, that was done in C++, and that is for advanced audience who are already familiar with C++, who already have a good amount of knowledge from before. But in order for you to be able to write something complex as that, you would need to learn these basics. So the, the keylogger, it could have been written in C Sharp, it could have been written in Java, etc. But why did I opt to actually write it in C++? Well, first of all, minimum amount of dependencies, practically no, no dependencies of whatsoever. If you wrote it in Java, you would have to have a virtual layer underneath to actually run and Java runtime environments, they're not installed on every single PC out there. So that is, that is a problem. Also, if you had C Sharp, you would again need a sub layer. That's another dependency, which is not something that you want to make such programs dependent on. It also a lot. There are there are num there are good number of frameworks there, but you don't really need them to actually be able to work in C plus plus. And the keylogger, the way it was written, it was just pure code, no no frameworks, no nothing from scratch. Write it and make it work. But that was for the advanced audience. This course is completely different. This course will show you the backgrounds of making a keylogger, so to say because we will go over all the basic things like from square zip from square one and onwards to more advanced things in C++. So you don't really need any previous knowledge of coding, programming or C++ in order to take this course. It, it was designed so that anybody pretty much can take it and they can go at it, they can learn from it. It does require some work on your end I mean, it does require you to actually go through the videos, take a look at the code, try to create your own code, and perhaps, you know, take a look on the net for some extra resources. There are a lot of them out there. So keep that, keep that in mind. Also, C++, uh, C++ developers have the highest salary, one of the highest salaries in the world. I think that 
I'm not sure, like, assembly, I think, pays more, but something like that. But C++ have, one of the C++ programmers have one of the highest salaries in the world, as opposed to the PHP programmers or anything like that, primarily due to the fact that it is extremely complex. I don't know, in recent years, I think it's on par with Java in terms of salaries, but it ranks up pretty high, so keep that in mind. There, is a, there are plenty of jobs for it, both in the freelancing market and pretty much the companies also request it. So it is a very popular language. It's been around for a very long time. And the new refresh with the C++11 standards are, they're basically like godsend because uh, there were, a lot of standardization has been done. Uh, some new, very useful libraries have been added and you have some fantastic functions that are out there as well that we will go over. So we will go from square one and we will keep on moving towards the more advanced things and we it will get it will get very complex in a relatively short amount of time through the course and you will be able to learn a great deal now in addition to all of this uh, you have the Q&A section in the Q&A section of the course you can post any questions that you might have there will always be somebody there to provide you with answers so if you encounter problems if you can't compile uh, if your code doesn't work, etc., please go to the Q&A section and somebody will be there. I usually hire people to look at the Q&A section continuously and provide you, the students, with answers so that they would help you out, so that they would make the ride smoother and provide for a better experience overall. Another thing is that my YouTube channel is out there and I there, there'll be a link somewhere here. I usually create announcements there I create updates in terms of vlogs and uh, I state, for example, okay, we're next month, we're going to be doing this. This is the next course. This is what I was planning to do. You'll be able to stay up to date, etc. And also, feel please feel free to send me private messages in regard to requests. So you can request particular content to be added to the course. That is also one of the privileges and benefits that I leave for my students. So if I have skipped something in regard to C++, if I haven't explained something that well, or if I made a mistake somewhere, something like that, please feel free to send me a private message or feel free to send me an email or on YouTube. It really doesn't matter. Contact me however you wish and tell me like, hey, I would like you to explain this part and I would like you to explain this part. Hey, you didn't explain this. Could you add this to the course? Now, there are no guarantees that I will, of course, add these videos, but usually I do, as long as it is something reasonable, I go, I go the extra mile and I make it. And it's going to get posted in the course. Why is this important? Well, I don't know, if you're a student, high school student or a college student or whatever, and if you're having, and if you're struggling with a particular subject in regard to C++, you can make a request and perhaps I can make videos in regard to that subject to help you along the help you along the way. So that's very nice. You can also post suggestions for other courses if you like. You can post suggestions for content in general, what you would like me to provide you with. Also, uh, the review system. Yeah, please leave the reviews. They are very important, of course. But uh, if, you're, if you leave a bad review, that is your right and you are fully entitled to it. Please leave a comment down below, like state, I didn't like this, this, and this, and that is why I gave one star or something like that. Just, just explain why, why, why you gave a negative feedback so that I can act on it and perhaps change it or improve it or do something like that in order to provide for a better experience. Anyway, I do believe that that would be it as far as the course in C++. Aside from all of that, you can see my working environment here. Not the cleanest or the neatest of working environments. There are just monitors, ton load of cables on the table, ton load of cables below the table, keyboards. I think I have three or four machines here working, plus God knows how many virtual machines, etc. It's really chaotic because I do all of my stuff here, aside from Udemy as well. And Sometimes I, uh, I spend three days in this room, like not going out, anything. I bring the supplies in and that's like my temple where I stay for three days when a project needs to be done. Anyway, 
I'm always accessible. I will always answer. I will always answer your questions. Doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, or whatever. If you send me a private message, I will do my very best to answer. Whether you're, you're whether you're my student or not, doesn't matter. I will do my best to answer. I answer all of my, answer all the questions, and I read all of my emails and questions and inquiries and anything like that. So, if I miss you by any chance, or if I don't reply to you, just send the same message again so that you get pushed to the top of the stack because I receive like a hundred inquiries per day and I really do try to answer them all but if I miss one I am so sorry just send another one just copy paste it and send it again it's gonna get pushed to the top and I will do my very best to answer it anyway I would like to bid you all farewell and wish you a ton load of luck with this course